How you doing? My name is Randy Gordon, and this is After The Cut. So basically, this show here is about what guys do after they get their hair cut. You know what I'm saying? So like a lot of people talk about, you know, I went from the barber shop to get fresh, this, that, and the third, but the conversation never leaves the barber shop. And without further ado, I'm gonna introduce you to my guy, my man Desmond, great guy, one half of Humphrey and Butler Law. We can turn it over to him right now. Man, thank you for having me, bro. No doubt. Hey, congratulations, G. Thank you, man. This this barbershop fire, dog. I want to know this. My personal question to you, <laughs> bro. What made you choose law? You know what, bro? To be real, I'm come. I'm the oldest of three, so I got a younger brother, younger sister, my parents, everybody. So, you know, being the oldest, dog, you gotta keep everybody out of trouble. Right, right. So I found myself defending my siblings. As time would go on, right, right. My mama always be like, "Boy, you shut up, you a lawyer." And it's like you acting like a lawyer, right? <laughs> so I kept hearing lawyer. I'm like, "Man, where is this coming from?" So I had a godmother who actually became a lawyer. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna be a lawyer. I didn't really know what it entailed, but I feel like the law just kind of chose me. As weird as that sound, right? right, right. But here's the thing, Randy. I'm, you get what I'm saying? <laughs> you can't <laughs> see the the thing about me, man, is I'm not a genius. I'm not a academic person right but i would outwork your ass you feel me right and people negate the fact that you don't have to be the smartest person in the room to be the hardest worker right you feel me what made you want to be a barber then like how'd you get yeah. into this so basically i never dreamed about being a barber i'm gonna keep it sack with you i wasn't this was not my destiny this was not my dream you know what i'm saying so i'm working at dollar journal what so this is my last that's a, that's a crazy ass place to go from so I was like, I was 19. I worked in that Dollar General. And I went to the guy who taught me. I'm like, yo, Mike, I was hungry. So I said, hey, man, I'm hungry, man. Let me, let me get some money. That nigga said no. <laughs> right? So I saw him. Well, hey, why are you saying no? He's like, nigga, you know I'm hungry. You got some money. Give me $10. Yeah. Let me go to Subway. Give me a sub. It's sub of the day. So, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He said, nah. And he made me, he said, no, the money you got from Dollar General, which my check was for a whole week, dog, $75. For the whole week? $75 for the week. He said, buy some clippers. So it was a dude named Will. Okay. Crazy there Will. Will got an afro. Will be rambling. Will, Will, a little different. You know yeah, 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 yeah. But I bought some, some used 76s from Will. Mm -hmm. And back then, like, I, I thought it was a loud ass vacuum cleaner. <laughs> Good clippers. I remember you know what I'm saying. So I possibly cut my hair with that. So you got oil them to get them right. So I bought them from Will for like 80 bucks. You okay. know what I'm saying? Oil them up, fixed them. And the rest is history. And now, wow. now, now we're here. You said something deep, though. You was like, you asked for something, and Will said no. Mike said no. Mike said no. And then Will gave you something else. The power of no in your life, bro, will push you to where you are now. Right. Would you be Randy without that no? Hell no, I'm gonna be me, me without that no. I'll probably do something different. You know what I'm saying? You, I'm, you might have represent me. <laughs> if I didn't represent You know what I'm saying? That's just me being honest with you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You coming from where I'm coming from? My background, my background is different, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I'm in fifth grade telling you you're going to be dead for now you're 21. I think 18 years old. Damn. So now I'm, I'm, I'll am i be 37. You know what I'm saying? Look at you. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm like, so every single day is a blessing from here. You know nice. what I mean? Tell me. Nice. So it's like, bro, like I, I could have took that shit and ran with it and be like, you know what? I'm going to just be a villain out here. Yeah. And I said, you know what? I'm going to do something different. I saw like poverty around me, the drugs, the whole nine. Life showed you cards, and some guys choose to just fall into that. Right. You get what I'm saying? Then you got other people that's like, "Yo, I'm not gonna live like this." Right. You know what I mean? Granted, I come from a good household. I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. I knew that my dreams and my aspirations were more. Right. You know, it wasn't for material things. It was more so I wanted a peace of mind. I wanted to be able to help my family and give back and do things like that. So I'm from Knoxville, right. went to the University of Tennessee. Uh, I also went to this college called Lee University. I was going at the same time because I got put on academic probation, <laughs> Tennessee. So I had to go to like a community college and go back. And go back. <laughs> By the way, I got married on my 21st birthday. So we moved from Knoxville to, uh, to Atlanta. Okay. I'm not in Atlanta, bro, a month. Walking home, I'm living in Buckhead, but the Lindbergh area at the time, living off a of refund check money, all right? I didn't have it. Man, I get to my door and I hear, Black Clamp, turn around. It's a young guy, had to be like 15, 16 year old. Gun to my head, Damn. Give it up. 
give me all your stuff. And this is how I knew the law was really, really something I wanted to do. Because all I kept thinking, the gun is to my head, he's taking my laptop, he's taking everything. All I'm thinking is, I see your face. Nigga, you're doing this all wrong. You know what I'm saying? You're doing it wrong. I see your name. I can remember your license plate. Like, you, you moving real slow. You right, know what I'm right, saying? Right. That's how I knew I, I, this is what I want to do, bro. You right. know what I'm saying? The nigga robbed me wrong. But I feel like there was a moment where God tested me. He showed me two things. One, is this something you want to do? Right. Right? Two, these are the people you got to deal with. Three, I'm in control. Because I'm also protecting you. Another question I want to ask you about law, because a lot of kids, a lot of people jump into law. Yeah. So what are like do's and don'ts, how to prepare yourself for school and all that stuff if you want to pursue that career? What I say is this, go get some real experience. Be around people, join some ministries, get out in the streets to see how the world really works. They want you to be out of touch with reality. They want us to sit in these ivory towers with all this money and just quote the law and speak a different language that people don't know. But here's the reality. You got to talk to people. You got to be around people. You feel me? That goes back to being prepared. You feel me? Nobody cares about how long Randy has cut hair. All they care about is, do my does my hair look good? Does my old lady like it? Right. You know what I'm saying? That's and it. I, at one point, that question was valid because when I was beginning, I was trash. So, <laughs> man, I remember I couldn't do a ball paint for three hours. <laughs> yeah. And then, because like, look, wow, because like, I'm sitting there sweating bullets, you know what I'm saying? Like a lot of people, a lot of bars ain't gonna miss this, y'all. Mm -hmm. When you first start cutting hair, you nervous, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then you cut it, you start sweating, and then all of a sudden, <laughs> yo, it's hot in here, turn the AC on. Nah, and the, 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 your OG looking at you like, nah, I'm, I'm cool, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you sweating so much? You know what I'm saying? So I'm coming here for hours. Yeah. And I finally, it finally clicked in like the last 30 minutes I got about. We were on the topic already. Yeah. What made me, what made you choose me as your rival? What made me stick with you man is one I would say out of all the barbers I've had you are the most consistent you are the most respectful of my time and you are very precise in your movements it's almost scary I tell you all the time I feel like you should have been a surgeon <laughs> because you have never you know cut my beard cut my mustache nothing and I can tell that although you go on you can be going through something your cuts are not emotional. You feel me? It's like, I know what to expect. Because you are the caliber of barber you are, and at the price point you are, that's what clients expect. Right. You feel me? And you deliver every time I show up. Hey bro, it's been a pleasure, my dude. Thank Same, you, bro. Thank you for coming on the show, bro. Yeah, dog. Thank you for believing in me. Thank you for just my head I did just push me forward to do yeah. it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's that's what a true brotherhood is. It is. You know what I mean, I would never let you shortchange yourself. You feel me? At the end of the day, you are Randy Gordon, and you are gonna be the pinnacle of what everybody wanna be. Oh yeah, my goal has always been to be the best Randy. There it is. There's a lot of niggas there ready. <laughs> be the best one. Yeah. <laughs> My G, it's been a pleasure, bro. Keep going, man. All up.